Well, growing up, I was always curious about how things work, uh, especially things that are mechanical. Uh, and whenever I saw something, I would try to take it apart, then put it back together, and sometimes try to put it back in, dif in a different way to see how it would work if you put it back in a different way. Now, back in the 1970s, uh, there was uh, an Arab oil embargo. At that time, if there's anybody old enough to remember, there were long lines at the gas stations uh, because there was not enough uh, gasoline to sell. So I started thinking at that time whether that is uh, our future energy source or is it something else? And the only answer I could come up with was solar energy because that's the only energy source that comes from outside this earth and is uh, unlimited. Uh, so since that time, my research interests have always been on how to develop solar energy for different applications and how to make it more efficient. My research and uh, some of my innovations happen to be on how to store solar energy uh, for future use. Uh, that includes uh, thermal energy storage, uh, storage of energy as hydrogen, or hydrogen energy storage. Um, and in fact, uh, in thermal energy storage, we have developed a technology right here at USF, uh, which I think is not only effective technology, but it's the cheapest and it actually reduces the cost of solar energy on the whole rather than increase it. Uh, Dr. Goswami is great to work for. Uh, he can be a little demanding, but I think that kind of inspires you to reach beyond the goals you otherwise would have set for yourself. So in addition to his own research, Yogi has also impacted the research for the rest of us here at USF. Uh, he heads up the uh, Clean Energy Research Center, uh, but he also uh, was able to bring in the Florida Energy Systems Consortium, which is a multi-university uh, organization system that uh, spurs uh, the developments and research within the energy sector. Really, was one of the most outstanding individuals I've had the pleasure to, to work with, certainly meet. His contributions in science and engineering are, are enormous and he's internationally recognized throughout the world. Uh, and his books are used for both uh, academic as well as research kind of uh, enterprises. My son had, and still has, that is he's asthmatic and has a lot of allergies. So while he was growing up, we were able to figure out uh, what kind of food to give him and what kind of food to avoid or what he would drink and what he could not drink. But I felt that there was nothing we could do about the air he was breathing. A solar technology that I had just developed, which by the way was demonstrated at Tyndall Air Force Base to clean up their contaminated groundwater, I felt that I could use that technology to clean air. Uh, the only difference would be uh, that this technology would not use solar energy, it would use uh, uh, lamps which would give us light of appropriate wavelength and uh, uh, the technology would be deployed on air filters so that as air goes through it, that air gets cleaned. So that technology became the photocatalytic air disinfection technology the first one of its kind that I developed. Uh, we got three patents on that technology. The technology of photoelectrochemical oxidation, uh, which is now known as PICO, uh, which is being commercialized by a company that I co-founded uh, called Molecule. And uh, uh, I'm very happy to see that that technology has helped a, not just my son, but a number of people already, that that 
gives us a new paradigm for what we should expect in our indoor air.